Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Stefan Ash and my goal is to be your go-to guy for casual and beginner players. Today, I'm gonna bring you a leveling guide to get your jobs from 70 to level 80 before the Endwalker expansion comes out. Quick disclaimer, this is for your alt jobs. If your main job is 70, then just finish the main story quest and you'll be at level 80 in no time. First off, let's talk about experience boosting items and effects. Today, we're going to be using the FC Experience Boost or the Squadron Manual. I will talk about the Squadron Manual a little bit later, but these effects do not stack, so I use the manual as it's 15% instead of the 10% FC boost that's available to me. Your FC you're in might have the 15% Experience Boost available to you. Just go with that one. We are also going to use the Food Experience Boost. You can use a good quality food or you can just buy some cheap food off the market board for this. We are also going to be using the rested experience boost which is where you log out in a city which you should be doing anyway. You'll see a little crescent on the experience bar so you know you're in the right place when logging out. We also have the road to 70 or the armory buff. You get a 50% experience boost from 70 to 80. It doesn't show here but as long as you have your main class to level 80 you should receive it. And last but certainly not least is Menfina's Earrings. This is why you should order or pre-order Endwalker. This is a 30% bonus experience boost for all your battle classes. This is just too crazy good to pass up. With all of this, I get 155% experience. I'm not good at maths, but that is just where I ended up. If I missed any or you have different ones, let me know in the comments down below. I will pin a comment specifically for this so then other players can check to make sure that they have everything available to them. Final Fantasy XIV has so many different ways to level, different aspects of the game to focus on, and overall a lot of content. There are a few really good daily things you can do to get the most out of leveling your character. I am going to go over two methods. The first one I'm not too crazy about, but that is the Bojan Front. It is arguably the best way to level any job. I actually don't prefer this method as I feel like it's kind of boring and can burn the player out pretty quickly. I would only recommend this method if you actually like the Bojan front and you have people to play with. If you go by yourself and don't find a group or just a group of one or two, then this method is doesn't really work as you get more experience when you're in a group and more people finishing the fates and critical engagements in a timely manner. The only time that I really found this worth it is when I was in parties of 8 and we were blowing through those fates and critical engagements so quick and the instants were really really heavy populated. There are so many other aspects than just experience gaining and that is longevity. If I want to pluck my eyeballs out at the end of every hour just because I'm trying to level something and I'm not really having fun then it's not really going to last for me. Boja just bores me out of my mind if I'm just trying to level. I genuinely really like the Bojan content and will play it, but not just for mindless leveling. If you don't mind doing that and you're going to watch Netflix or do something else, then this will be the method for you. This leads me to my method of daily activities. It's really obvious, but duty roulettes. Don't fret. It's not just a duty roulette, there's a little secret method to the madness my friends. I even do this for my DPS classes because it allows me to play other parts of the game while I'm waiting for duty roulette, like leveling up your crafters and gatherers if not already leveled. Anyway, let's get into the method now. I'm going to take you step by step what I do every single day. First thing I do when I log in is queue instantly for the main story quest. This is such a huge part of experience every day and if there's a Moogle event going on like there is when I'm recording this video then you'll also get tombstones. I really like killing two birds with one stone. Also for someone who really loves to multitask it is perfect because I can check all my social media, respond to any comments, make coffee, work on YouTube stuff in between the cutscenes. This is usually the longest queue I have to wait for but then after that it goes pretty quickly. As I'm queuing for my main story quest, I take care of all my retainers and my squadron missions. Retainers to start hoarding items for endwalkers and all my crafter and gathering. Mission squadrons to get everyone to level 60. If you don't know about mission squadrons or the grand company squadron, then leave a comment down below. I'm thinking about making a video for it. 
The reason why you want to level these up is you actually get these really cool squadron manuals which gives you a 15% experience boost similar to the level 3 FC one you can get. Which makes this method entirely solo and you can do it yourself without having to rely on other people. Don't get me wrong, community is super great and if you can do this with other people that even makes it go by so much faster. But I really like that there is an opportunity to do things by yourself if you're not really feel up to talking to other people or having to ask your FC to put a buff on. The next thing I do, which I think is like the hidden gem of experience gaining, is the Pixie Tribe Beast Quest. This right here gives so much experience, it's silly. Each day you can do three quests that give you anywhere from 1 to 2 million experience per quest. That means a total of 3 to 6 million experience every day between level 70 and 80. It's absolutely insane and you can do this every day in like 5 minutes for practically free experience. About 90% of the time, once I'm done with this, my main story quest is ready to pop or has during the Beast Tribe quest. If it still hasn't, you have some other Beast Tribes you can do that give far less experience but still totally worth it. The Kojin Beast Tribe and the Ananta Beast Tribe, I only do this if I have time before my main story quest. I included a screenshot as to why I do the main story quest. It gives you around 13 million or 9 to 16 million just depending on what your level is. Again, this is far too easy experience and allows you to do other stuff in real life while you're waking up and ready to go on to the next stuff. After this queue, I usually just start going down the list. One of the really big ones that people just won't do or forget to do is PvP Duty Roulette. This gives anywhere from 5 to 11 million experience in about 10 to 15 minutes. The great thing about this is you can queue with any character. So I queue with the monk and then I usually just play healer since a lot of people don't like playing healer in PvP. Again, comment down below if you don't know anything about PvP. It's another video that I've really been wanting to make and if I have already made it then I'll include a card up above but it's one of those hidden gems that I think a lot of people don't do when it can give a ton of experience. Once you job change in the PvP match, you're still gonna get all of the experience for Monk. Super awesome. So after going through all the roulettes, let's talk about the in-betweens for the queue times. There are a lot of things that you could be doing for more experience as you're waiting for your queues. One of those things is combat leaves, which you can do while you're waiting to queue. One of my favorite things to do is actually the relic grind quest for all of my relic jobs. So you have to do fates and you can do those while you're waiting for your queue time. So you're kind of killing three birds with one stone. If you solely want to focus on just getting experience, then you can also do challenge log or hunting log, and that gives pretty good experience as well. I mean, I can just keep going, but I'll give you guys a little bit of break. With everything above combined, it takes me about three hours to get about two and a half, almost three levels within those three hours. So it's kind of like a level an hour. I like this method far better than Boja because I'm more involved in the game and complete more aspects of the game. Once I complete my dailies then I'll jump into Boja if I just have a little bit to go on my experience bar just to hit that next level. I do this method pretty much from 70 to 79. I then use the Wondrous Tales to finish out the experience bar for an easy 18 million experience. Getting one job from 70 to 80 with this method takes about 4 days or less and I like this method because it still gives me a life outside of the game as well as letting me do side quests and unlock quests. I really hope you found this video helpful and will encourage you to start leveling your characters before Endwalker comes out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more Final Fantasy XIV tutorials then click right here.